Welcome to the Life Leadership Podcast with myself, Leela Singh. All things coaching, career, and personal branding. This podcast is for ambitious career professionals like you, wanting to create a life of choice and freedom, to be, do, and have more through overcoming limitations, to develop new perspectives and insights, and to redefine your success, be that in work, health, relationships, and so much more. Hello there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Alive with Leela. My name is Leela Singh, and I'm a life leadership, career, and personal brand coach. And I work with career professionals, typically in the technology industry, who want to create a life of freedom of choice to elevate your life, to elevate your career and overcome self-imposed limitations whilst creating new possibilities by redefining your success in your work, your health, your relationships and so much more. What I call life leadership, all whilst showing up as the best version of yourself. I wanted to share with you a few of my beliefs and philosophies on life, things that I have learn and gain through my immersive personal development experience over the last several years as well as you know um encompassing my corporate career of, of 25 years where i had a, a breadth and a wealth of experience and great opportunities and as a consequence of that that's what's brought me to where i am today running my own coaching practice and coaching incredible people who want to just create a better life for themselves to create that life of freedom and choice. And here are some of my beliefs and philosophies that I want to share with you. And this will just give you a feel for the kind of topics and themes that I share with you on these lives and also in my day to day content on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. So number one, hard work is simply not enough when it comes to advancing your career. Your personal brand is your professional reputation. So do get out there and create it. So, as I said, hard work is simply not enough when it comes to advancing your career. Your personal brand is your professional reputation. So get out there and create one. Number two, we are the creators of our own self-imposed limitations. We're the ones that hold ourselves back. Number three, we create our own reality and experiences through our lens of the world, our thoughts, our beliefs, and our actions. What that means is that we can therefore change them. Number four, we can do anything we set our minds to. Anything really is possible. It's all about mindset. Number five, work can be both fulfilling and fun. Really, truly, it's all about perspective being open to change, taking risks, and most importantly, not just chasing the money. Because if you do that, then you'll find that you're spending at least a third of your life simply being or feeling unfulfilled, unhappy and frustrated to simply pay the bills and live for your weekends and your holidays. And that's really not what life has to be. Number six, most people are playing a small game, simply living a life of average, when in fact you can play full out and choose a life of extraordinary and creating possibilities and opportunities way beyond your imagination. And this is what I work with my clients to create. So just some beliefs and philosophies I wanted to share with you there. Today's topic, why cultivating self-awareness improves your life. Now, why am I sharing this with you today? I was trying to think of a, a topic or a theme for today's live. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm always talking about self-awareness. So whether I'm speaking on stage, whether I'm coaching my clients in day-to-day -day conversations with people when they're asking for some support, some guidance, something that I always hear myself talking about is self-awareness. Why? Because by becoming aware of how we feel, how we are thinking, how we're behaving, how we're choosing to respond to situations and essentially how we're showing up in the world and then discovering 
how our day-to-day -day experience of life is created by us and no one else gives us greater control, greater empowerment and freedom over our own life. Now, that might sound like a huge thing to take on. So let me just go back over that slowly. The importance of cultivating self-awareness and how it improves your life. OK, so what is the importance of cultivating that self-awareness? Because by becoming aware, self-aware, we could say, becoming aware of how you're feeling, how you're thinking, so the thoughts that you're having, the way that you're behaving in any given moment, the way that you choose to respond to situations and ultimately how you're showing up in the world. And alongside that, discovering how your day-to-day -day experiences of life, in other words, the circumstances, the situations you find yourself in, what is happening for you, Discovering that that is actually created by you and by no one else. And by having this level of self-awareness and, and understanding this and discovering that our life is created by us, this gives us even greater control, greater empowerment and greater freedom over our life and the life that we want to create. In other words, if there's aspects of your life that you would love to improve or to see change in, then here's the thing. The power to do that lies within you. You have the ability to do that. And when I talk about self-awareness, this isn't about me sharing with you today. And I will do. I will share some, some approaches with you that will help to start to build that self-awareness. But it doesn't mean that by you taking this on board and potentially embracing it and thinking, OK, yeah, I want to start to develop my self-awareness. It does not mean that tomorrow morning you'll wake up and you'll be incredibly self-aware and your whole life is going to change overnight. Because building self-awareness is like building a muscle, like any muscle that we work out. Our, our brain is a muscle that we, we have to keep using. You've heard the phrase. Um, uh, use it or lose it. It's like exercise as well. You know, you could go to the gym and do weight training for an entire year and then you stop and all that muscle and strength that you've built, you lose because you're not working on developing that muscle. And it's very similar with your self-awareness. If you imagine self-awareness as a bit like a muscle, you've got to keep honing it, cultivating, developing it. And it's something that builds over time. So that in days, weeks and months to come, you'll, you'll have a heightened sense of self-awareness. But you've got to start somewhere. And that's what I'm here to share with you today. If it's not something you're already doing or practicing or you don't even know where to start, then that's a little bit I can share with you today. So when I talk about building awareness, what am I actually talking about? You want to slow down. First and foremost, it's just to slow down to life a little bit and, and start to just check in with yourself. So becoming aware of your, your feelings, the emotions that are coming up for you throughout the day. So from the moment you wake up, because here's the thing, we often go through life almost unconsciously. We're not really stopping and checking in with ourselves. We just get on, we wake up, we shower, get dressed, do whatever we're gonna do, our routine things and off we go and maybe go to work for the day or running your business, whatever it is for you. And spending time with your family, your children, um, seeing your friends, your loved ones, and watching a bit of TV, maybe going traveling, days out here and there, go to sleep, get up, do it all again the next day. But if you slow down to all of that, and just start to check in with yourself. This is one of the first steps of building that self-awareness is to tuning into the feelings that you have from the moment you wake and then throughout the day as situations occur. So how do you feel when you first wake up? How do you feel when you go to work or when you log on, if you're working remotely or if you have your own business, how do you feel? What are the feelings that you have going on around you? What are the emotions you experience when you're around certain people? 
or not around certain people. So again, start to build that awareness of how you're feeling rather than just simply feeling it, become aware of what you're feeling. And you might be thinking, well, how do I even do that? A great way to do it is by journaling. Um, journaling for some people creates resistance when they hear that word. So if you just think about taking a notebook and making notes of what's coming up for you, that's in essence journaling um, and starting to just write about the thoughts that are coming through you. But this isn't, today is not about journaling, it's about building that self-awareness. And a great way to do that is to just slow down. If you're someone who maybe has a meditation or yoga practice that you do every day, that's a great opportunity to slow down and just to, to sort of check in with yourself. And that's when perhaps you'll start to experience the feelings and emotions of your life right now, where it's at, what's going on for you. And a great way as I said, to record it is to, so you can go back and look at it, is to write some notes. So checking in with your feelings, your thoughts as well. So not just your emotions, but also the thoughts that you're having. So let's say you um, encountered a situation at work today with a colleague and it became uncomfortable or confrontational or argumentative or whatever, something unpleasant. That's the kind of situation you want to go back and just look at in your own mind and think, okay, what thoughts came up for me at that point, at that when that situation occurred? What was happening for you? And actually, was it about the other person and they should be doing this and they shouldn't speak to me like that and they're being this, that and the other? Or, or are you actually checking in with yourself and how you're showing up? Because the thoughts that we have often is exactly what creates our reality. So if we go in with an expectation that something's going to be a certain way, more often than not, it will be that way. And if it's a negative expectation, then guess what? You're likely to get a negative experience. So by slowing down to the thoughts that you're having when you go into any given situation will help you to start to realize how you're showing up, what is going on for you. And actually you can stop and think, mm, what can I do differently? to create a better experience for myself. Um, I'm just trying to think of an example. So it could be that, let's say you have been working remotely for a while now and you've got to go into the office and meet up with your colleagues. And perhaps it's the first time that you're meeting them in person because you've only started your job in the last couple of years since, since the pandemic. Or it might be you've just not met up with them for a while, it could be six months, it could be a year. And so feeling a little bit disconcerted about having to now go back into the office, which is something different that you might not have done for a while, and then being around your colleagues in person. So that might be bringing up feelings, emotions for you that make you feel uncomfortable. And then you're going to have thoughts around that. So check in with yourself. This is a great opportunity. Check in with yourself, slow down. What thoughts are coming up for you? Are they positive thoughts or are they negative thoughts? Are they thoughts that are about um, or that are concerning you, that are creating worry for you or stress or anxiety? And if they are, and by the way, you can apply this to any um, given situation. It doesn't have to be returning to the office. It could be anything. It could be, you know, going to a client meeting. It could be delivering a presentation. It could be having a one to one with your manager. Whatever situation it is, I'm using work examples. It could be anything else as well. But the point here is that you want to be tuning in to what are the thoughts that you're having and the feelings that you're experiencing with this situation, this experience, this circumstance. And is it helping you or is it hindering you? Is it making you feel bad or worried or anxious? And therefore, what can you do if you think about the thoughts that you're having? How can you change those thoughts to create a better experience for you? And this is what I mean by building self-awareness. And here's the thing, there's no right or wrong to any of this. It's, by, it's about, sorry, it's about building the awareness of yourself and the emotions that you're having in situations and the thoughts associated with that. And if they're not great, then what can you do differently to create better experiences for yourself, better emotions, better feelings that make you feel good, perhaps make you feel more confident than you would have done five minutes ago. And a lot of that is, comes from what we focus on. 
So what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on all the things that could go wrong or potential um, judgment from other people, other people's opinions? That's one of the things that causes a lot of fear for people. What is it that you're choosing to focus on and what can you choose to focus on instead? Another thing is language. So the way that we talk to ourselves, you know, that inner self-talk, that dialogue that we have going on, on, you know, the, the chimp on the shoulder, the, that, that, you know, is telling us we're not good enough or that we're not ready for this or something's not perfect yet or they're going to laugh at me or they're going to criticise me or they're going to judge me. And all of those thoughts that we have, you want to start to check in again, slow down. So how are you talking to yourself? And ask yourself, the way that you're talking to yourself, is that how you would talk to a young child? It's probably unlikely. Oftentimes when I've asked people this and they stop and think, no, because how do you talk to a young child? You're likely to shower them with love, encourage them, keep pushing them to, to try again. If they're learning to walk, get up, keep going, do it again and again and again. And you know, celebrating with them as they keep attempting to, to get better at something, to improve or to discover and to be curious. So why is it as adults, we think there's so much wrong in that, that it's bad to, to get up, take a few steps and fall down and get up again. When you're a child, you don't worry about what anyone's thinking, you just keep doing it until you can do it to the best of your ability. As an adult, we criticize, we put ourselves down and all of that then impacts the way that we show up, our behaviors and ultimately our experiences, both with ourselves and with other people and the experiences that other people have with us. So in your thoughts, your inner dialogue, your self-talk, these are all things you want to start to bring to your attention. And that's why it's important to slow down to be able to do so. So we've talked about feelings, thoughts, the language that you have and your actions. What actions perhaps are you exhibiting that are not really helping you or serving you and are holding you back? Perhaps it's, it's sitting in a meeting and not speaking up. Why? Because you're worried about not being heard about, being judged about other people's opinions, about getting something wrong. How about you get to let go of all of that and actually just take action and do what you were going to do because the outcome is the outcome. You can't control things outside of you. You can't control other people or situations. All you can control, all you have power over is you and what you choose to do. So what I'm inviting you to do is to really start to build that self-awareness of what you are doing and what you could do differently to give you a better experience, a better outcome, a better opportunity even. Think about another, another aspect here is responding. How do you respond to people or to situations? An example I use very, very often when I'm giving talks or training is around um, uh, road rage. So yes, I'm guilty. I used to suffer with road rage. I probably still do, but I manage it very differently. Um, so when I was working in, in the corporate world, uh, for most of my time in that life, I would drive to work and there was a lot of motorway driving. So inevitably on many a morning, I would have somebody on the motorway who would do something a bit silly, cut me up or almost cause an accident or whatever. Right. And initially pre my self-awareness days, my personal growth, um, I would likely get really wound up about it. I probably shout and swear at the person and whatever. And, and you know, they, they haven't got a clue. They've carried on their merry way and I'm getting all worked up in my car as I continue to drive to work. And what then happens is I show up in the office. Um, my colleagues ask me how my journey in was because they all knew I had quite a long commute, um, you know, and then I kick off it. Oh, this idiot on the road did this, did this and this and, you know, if you think about the energy behind that, when I'm talking about it, it's not great energy. Um, and and, and the, the challenge with that is it's impacting me. It's also impacting the people around me, potentially, because I'm now bringing in this energy of this frustration and being really wound up or annoyed about this person on the road that cut me up about an hour ago. I'm still carrying it with me and I'm now venting it to the people in the office. And 
then I sit down and I open my laptop and I look at all these emails and I'm like, oh my God, da, 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 da. think about, this is a great example of self-awareness. When you start to become aware of how you're showing up, the thoughts, the feelings, the actions that you're exhibiting, are they serving you? Are they helping you or are they hindering you? And this is an example of actually, you know, opening the laptop and being in that negative state the experience I'm going to have at that point of looking at my um, my emails um, and, you know, being in that worked up state, I'm going to see them in a different way to if I had rewinding a few minutes now or maybe an hour to when I was on the motorway and somebody, you know, did something silly, um, you know, now I don't overreact to it because I've learned to respond differently to situations because I don't want to disempower myself or lose my own like control of my situation. And therefore by responding differently to situations, you get a different outcome. So when I then used to turn up at the office, everything was great because you know what? That driver has long gone, doesn't care anymore. I'm doing my own thing. Why let that person impact my day or my morning and the way that I'm showing up in the workplace? So by, by the time I started to build that self-awareness, I didn't need to, to vent as much or go on and on and carry this thing into the office and into my working day. So I'd show up in a much calmer way. And as you can imagine, in that sense, when I then open my laptop and look at my emails, I'm having a different experience. But I've gotten to create that myself. And this is what I mean when I talk about all of these things, whether it's our feelings, our thoughts, the way that we're talking to ourselves, the language that we're using, our actions and the way that we respond versus reacting to situations and ultimately the way that we show up in the world. All of that directly influences the experience that we get to have in the world. So in other words, if you want to have different, better experiences in the world, which directly influence your results, your outcomes, you want to start to build that self-awareness, which means slowing down to recognize how you are showing up in any given situation. Um, and also asking yourself the question, for example, what could I have done differently in that situation? How could I have managed that better? And this is what I mean about um, living consciously versus just drifting through life completely unconscious and just reacting, reacting, reacting and having a lot of negativity show up in your life and in yourself by virtue of how you see the world. Because when you get, you get to choose, and when you choose differently, you get a different experience. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you're thinking you want to have a different experience, whether that is in your workplace or your career, maybe it's with your health, relationships, whether it's your intimate relationship, your relationship with your children, with your colleagues, with your friends, you know, whatever it might be, how can you show up differently? How can you come at it from a different perspective that gives you a better experience and therefore the people around you? So oftentimes it's a lot easier to be waiting for everything outside of your control to change, whether that's people or circumstances, and excuse me, <coughs> and um, when I talk about situations and circumstances, it'll be things such as uh, it could be as simple as the weather, it could be the current economy, um, it could be um, the, the 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 current government, the decisions that are being made. You know, there's so many things outside of our control. It could be your manager, it could be your the company that you work for, and the decisions they're making, the changes they're making. Those are all things that you cannot control. The one thing that you have power over is you. And that means taking responsibility. And that is the thing I invite you to do today is to really slow down to how you can take responsibility for creating a better life for yourself. And a big part of that is developing your self-awareness. Because it is incredibly empowering rather than taking the disempowering approach of blaming circumstances and situations and people 
that you have no control over. So we can slow down to look at ourselves, however uncomfortable that may be, and reflect. And here's some questions to think about. As I said earlier, it's, like, it, it's asking yourself, what am I doing to create this situation or this experience? What can I do differently? Maybe it could be, how can I respond differently to this? How can I show up differently? How can I change the thoughts that I'm having about this situation or this person? So it creates a completely different experience for me. It's, it's even better. So in terms of building that muscle, what can you do? I invite you to start to reflect, reflect on situations, on experiences, on your day to day. So perhaps at the end of each day, if you just have a notebook by your bed and you spend five minutes just going back in your mind over the day and thinking about what what went well, what could have been better and how could I have created that to be better? What could I have done differently? So what did I do? What did I do that maybe created that experience that I didn't really enjoy? What could I have done to create a better experience? What can I do differently? And how can I choose to look at this in a different way? So those are some of the questions to ask yourself. So when you think, well, I can grab a notebook, I don't know what to write. This is where you get to just reflect back on the day and ask yourself those questions. You know, what am I doing to create this situation that occurred today? What can I do differently? What can I have done differently? What can I do? How can I handle that situation differently the next time it occurs? What was it that I did and how can I choose to look at this in a different way? So those are some questions to assist you in making those notes or as the term is journaling. And by doing this on a regular basis, it will start to build that muscle of self-awareness. And by developing a greater sense of, of self-awareness, you get to almost take back the control over your life and get to create the life that you want, the experiences that you want, and the outcomes and the results that you want. Because if you're showing up in a way where you're really, let's say you're really angry, you're frustrated at the world, you're hacked off with things or you know situations at, at, in your workplace, for, as an example, think about how that is creating that experience for you. What is it you can do that can change that? And that's what I'm going to leave you with today. And let me know your thoughts on today's topic. Let me know if it resonated with you and what you are going to be doing to start to cultivate your self-awareness. Because here's the thing, something I, I, I work with, with all of my clients is about developing that self-awareness. And believe me, it is life changing. It is so impactful. And it impact every area of your life, not just your work, but your relationships as well, your health, your finances, and your overall experiences. And I've just seen a comment come through. Let me just check this out. Elodie, hi there. I understand if you change the way we think of a situation, especially when it's not under our control, but sometimes it feels it's a way not to rebel. I think I hear what you're saying there. So what when you say about rebel what's the importance of that would be my question if the government does bad things we can change the way we see it but also act to stop the government from doing bad things of course so if there's ways of um taking action to stop bad things from happening then yes of course i'm not advocating for you not to do that but at the same time when we consider that there, there's a lot of good things in the world and there's a lot of bad things happening in the world right now. You get to choose how that impacts you. It's not about um, putting your head in the sand and pretending it, it's not happening, but it's about how we allow that to impact the way that we are showing up in the world, the feelings that we're having, the thoughts. So, for example, if, if you know, let's say we have a bad experience with an individual, it doesn't it doesn't mean that every person that's like that individual is a bad person, right? So it's about what we do with that, how what we do with it to create a positive experience for ourselves. And that's not about, as I said, about advocating for the good things and for change, but it's also about 
what we get to do and have control over. So we have some influence over things. Uh, I'm just looking at your comments. So where, um, say the government are doing bad things, we have some influence in that um, in terms of, you know, we can sign a petition, we can, you know, talk to the media about it, we can put stuff on social media. There's a lot of things we can do. And I'm not suggesting you don't do that. But the, 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 the I guess the takeaway from today, the underlying purpose of today is to really look at how we can manage ourselves and our emotions to create a better experience for ourselves. So I hope that answers your question and your comments, Elodie, and thank you for sharing that here. Um, and as I said, take care everyone. It's been great to have you here joining me today live. I look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Until then, have a great rest of the week. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already done so. And if you enjoyed and gained value from today's episode, then do please leave a review telling us your key learnings and what you enjoyed the most. And do please share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can spread the word on life leadership, creating a life of choice, freedom and new possibilities. Connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And if you would like to learn more about how we can work together, either DM me on LinkedIn or email me. All details and resources can be found in the show notes.